Welcome to Sports Spectrum, the sports and faith podcast that brings Jesus back into the conversation. Here's your host, Jason Romano. Hey everyone, welcome to Sports Spectrum. I am Jason Romano. Our website, sportspectrum.com. Our email address, jason at sportspectrum.com. Feel free to email me any questions, thoughts, or ideas that you have on today's episode. And we are sponsored and presented by two of our favorite ministries. The first is Compassion International, the most trusted child development ministry in the world. Every child discipled in the Word of God $38 a month, tax deductible, when you sponsor a child through Compassion. It provides food, education, medical care, vocational training, and as I mentioned, every child discipled in the Word of God. Over 1.8 million children, actually now over 2 million children around the world, are being impacted by the great work being done with Compassion International. Check out their website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum. Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum and pray about sponsoring a child today. We're also presented by a new sponsor and a new partner here at Sports Spectrum, Water Mission. And they are a nonprofit Christian engineering ministry that fights the global water crisis with safe water, sanitation, and hygiene solutions in developing countries and disaster areas. This organization, Water Mission, has served more than 5 million people in 56 country serving all people, regardless of age, gender, race, or faith, but they are motivated by its faith in Jesus Christ, who is the living water, and provides sustainable, safe water solutions through a Christian worldview perspective. Learn more about what they're doing, pray for them, get behind the mission that is Water Mission by going to their website, watermission.org, watermission.org. Today on the Sports Spectrum Podcast, we present to you a little bit different type of interview. And it's not because of the guest at all. It's because of the coronavirus. So Nick Hill is our guest today on Sports Spectrum. He's the Southern Illinois head football coach. And he uh, led his team this past season in 2019 from a 2-9 record in 2018 to 7-5 in 2019, a member of the Missouri Valley Football Conference, FCS school. Nick actually played a little bit in the NFL, stints with the Bears in 2008 and the Packers in 2012, played his college ball at his alma mater, Southern Illinois, from 2004 to 2007, and was a coach there in 2014 and 2015 before being named the head coach in 2016. We taped an interview with Nick back in February of 2020 that had not ran yet, and we were saving it until around spring ball time here uh, coming up in in mid-April. And then the coronavirus hit, and the pandemic, and everything changed for everybody. And so Nick was gracious, Coach Hill was gracious to come back on and answer a few questions about how the pandemic has affected him and certainly affected his role as a head coach at Southern Illinois. So the first part of this interview is actually the second interview that we did with Coach Hill on the pandemic and the coronavirus and how it's affecting his work right now as a head coach. The second part of the interview, which will come after our commercial break, is the interview we actually taped back in February. So hopefully that makes sense to you, but I think either way you'll get to you'll you'll enjoy getting to know Nick Hill. He's got a great story and he's living out his faith in Jesus as a football coach out in the world with a lot of people watching him, a lot of eyeballs on him, and he's one of the young up and coming coaches in college football right now. So we were blessed to have him and blessed to connect with him and uh, hopefully you enjoy his story. Here's part 1 of the conversation with Nick Hill that we taped more recently in early April as we talk about the pandemic and the coronavirus outbreak. Coach Nick, tell me about how this pandemic has has affected you. Let's start personally, I guess, and how it's kind of shaped all of our lives. What has this been like for you these last few weeks? Well, to be honest with you, it, obviously it's impacted us. They're, we're working from home and... Um, you know, everything that we do is a little bit different. Our routines are, are messed up. And I heard somebody say, you know, coaches are, are creatures of habit a lot of times, but in times like this, you got to come up with some new habits, some new routines, and that's okay too. I, I think the, the most important thing right now is that 
uh, as coaches, I think that in on all of us, and you've talked to a bunch of people, I mean, uh, the world of sports has been putting on the back burner and, and, um, and that's maybe okay. I've, I've sometimes feel guilty that, um, as far as my job goes and I still have a team, it looks a little bit different right now, but there's a lot of people in the world that are, um, worse off than me. So I almost feel at times where I've had to make myself, when I get up, the first thing I do is just is pray, pray for the people that are on the front lines every single day to, to be thankful for, I get to wake up. I, I do get to spend more time with my kids and my wife and do all these different things that a lot of times in our profession, we don't get to do. And some of our days have been awesome. And but then you almost feel guilty because there's a lot of people that this is affecting in a lot worse way and workers that are going overtime and don't get to see their kids and and all these things. So it's kind of a mixed emotions. I think that as coaches, I, the number one thing I've told our staff is during this time is that we can truly um, deepen our relationship with our players. The FaceTimes, daily calls, talks, pushing them in different ways. Uh, you got to adapt and adjust the way you're uh, teaching them. I think that they're going to learn and there's going to be coaches that go out there and push themselves to do installs and things like that. But I think the number one thing right now is relationships, pick up the phone and call their parents, uh, just dig deep into to the players themselves uh, as people right now. When did this really start hitting your radar? Was it not until everything was kind of postponed? I think when in the NBA season, got suspended and then March Madness just a couple days later. I think that's when it really opened up not only people's eyes in the sports world, but really the world. I mean, for me, I knew this was a big deal and okay, we got to wash our hands a little bit more and maybe elbow bump instead of shaking hands with people. But then when the NBA gets canceled and the world starts changing, especially in the United States, that's when I think it really took me for, you know, took a, you know, punch to my face and woke me up. How about for you? Yeah, I think the same thing. I mean, whenever the NBA suspended its season, and even then it was like, okay, you, maybe they're going to suspend it for a few games. But then whenever uh, we actually – we got we practiced five times in spring practice, and then we went on spring break, and I took the girls and actually my parents. We went to Colorado and went skiing. And when we were out there, that's whenever the NBA suspended its season, and we were you know watching the news, and I kept telling my dad, I'm like – I think the NCAA tournament's next. I mean, how can we go? And then it was no fans. And it's just everything I revert back to that. It's like, well, they couldn't do that or football season would be, you know, affected. And I'm like, they, the NCAA tournament, I mean, the, a month long, everybody glued to their TVs. I mean, I'm a huge basketball fan. I mean, my heart hurt. I mean, it's like the NCAA tournament, the final four, the, um, you know, the, it's like the Super Bowl. I mean, the, the final four in the Super Bowl to me are the top two sporting events there there are. And uh, the Masters maybe is third. And so everything I right now, when it, when they when they suspended the, the final or the March Madness, you know, that's when it really hit home. How is this affecting you going forward? What are some of the things that you have sort of laid in? You know, you mentioned having – uh, communication and talking to coaches, talking to players and staying, you know, in touch with everybody. But this is obviously different, you know, and, and spring ball was supposed to be taking place. I think you tell me, but that's now I'll put on the back burner burner and we don't know when we're going to be able to practice again, when we're going to be able to watch games again. We just don't know. Yeah. And so I think that that's what uh, we have to do right now as coaches. Obviously you want to be, gaining all the information you can so you can try to plan but there there's really no planning right now because it, it, you can't look too far ahead you can't start you know summer school hopefully we can get them here in summer school but are we really going to bring them back in the summer and are they going to be working out in june you don't so you you just have to take it really day by day week by week we know what this week's going to look like we know what really this this month of april is going to look like and i just you know right before i got on here told our staff we can plan for this month we know it's going to look a lot it's going to look like this what we're doing now and let's plan then and i think in a month we'll probably have a new direction on what the next month's going to look like and we'll adjust and adapt uh to whatever they tell us but i think that our message has to be to our players that there's more important things than the practicing right now it's it's being a good human being it's looking out for 
for everybody in the, our country, our world, our town, our city. And, um, and that's what we're trying to relay to the players and whatever they tell us that we can do. And when we can come back, then we need to be prepared for that and ready to go. Coach, I'm not sure if this is even a fair question to ask you, but I'm going to ask it if you can't answer. I, I don't, I don't think you'll be able to answer it, but I'm just curious what your thoughts are. Do you think there can be a football game being played on opening day in late August with 50,000 people in a football stadium watching a game the way we're looking at here? You know, I, I think about that a, a lot. Um, you know, I was talking to my brother yesterday and he's a high school football coach. I mean, I, I would say it's going to be hard for it to look the same that it, you know, we're talking in three, four months from now. And, yeah. um, you know, that's my prayer right now is for these, these doctors and these, the, the, the scientists and these people that are incredible that, uh, that are working for a vaccine and a cure and these people. And, uh, until there's that, then I don't, I don't think so. Uh, but I'm not a, I'm not a, uh, I'm not a doctor. I don't know all those type of things. So I have to, you know, put those in, in their hands, but we do have to be prepared for that, for football to look a little bit different, uh, in the fall, you know, you'd see Kurt Herbstreit come out and, and make comments and, and all those are real. All those are true. We'd be naive if we didn't think that they would suspend football season. Like they just did the, the NCAA tournament, uh, the same way. So I would say it's, it's hard, but I would say that there's definitely going to be something that looks different with football season. Well, the hope is that we have football. The hope is that there is some sense of normalcy. I don't know if we'll ever be able to go back to a normalcy again after all of this. What's the great lesson you've learned just in the past few weeks, Coach, from all that's taken place? And it could be spiritually. It could just be for, as a dad being more present with your kids. What's the what's a lesson that maybe the Lord has shown you these past few weeks? Well, I think that the thing with my faith is that it, it is – maybe in my lifetime, I'm 34, is that you're, you're not in control. At any point, I feel like God can say, no, it's time for all you guys to go in your house and get around your families or put your life on hold. Uh, the most important things that you think maybe, maybe our normal wasn't working out very good. And maybe our, our you know, the new normal we have to be okay with that. And it's probably not going to go back to anything that we knew the normal. It could get close, but why can't that be better? And maybe during these times you can uh, strengthen relationships and grow spiritually. Uh, you know, I'm reading a book right now, Stillness is the Key. And it's been a it's been a really good book right now. It's like, you know, during these times you can grow. I think there's going to be a lot of great inventions and ideas that stem from these few months that these great people look back and be like, you know, when I thought about that, that was when I was quarantined or, or, you know, when I, when I grew that relationship where I reached out to that person, that all came because I had some time to think. And the best ideas come from whenever you have some time to be alone with your thoughts. And I pray that that that's what we look back on this time. And um, it happens. It's been fun to see in our church, our, our small group meets on Wednesday nights. We've had some of the best meetings we've had over Zoom and the kids and worship. I think it's it's made people be intentional about meeting and in a new way and uh, the church services and uh, seeing people rallying around the, the country right now. Everybody just how can I help has been inspiring to me. That was Coach Nick Hill, Southern Illinois head football coach. And again, we're going to bring you part two of the conversation, which is actually part one of the conversation, if that even makes sense. What you just heard was taped uh, late March, early April, early spring, if you will, of 2020 after the pandemic. What you're about to hear, and we're just going to start it with me introducing Coach and saying hello to him was taped February of 2020 and has not yet been released. So this part that you're about to hear right now was the original podcast that was going to be released and tells the story of Nick Hill from a football perspective and from, even more importantly, a faith in Jesus perspective and where his journey of faith began. Take a listen to part two with Nick Hill, Southern Illinois head football coach. Talk about your team this past year and what's your assessment of all that took place and the growth that your team had in 2019. Yeah, it was definitely a step in the right direction. I think that, um, you know, we play in such a unbelievable conference and, and had a difficult s- schedule, especially early. We played two FBS schools, was it was able to win one of them at UMass and then at the Missouri Valley Conference in the FCS 
football is like the SEC. So um, usually five or six teams that you play are going to be ranked in the top 25. This year there was four ranked in the top 10. And um, so, uh, you know, we were we were excited, but not not where we know we, we can be and want to be, but uh, took steps in the right direction. And then ultimately we felt like um, should have been in the playoffs and we're playing as good as anyone uh, at that time, at the end of the season, you know, we won five games in a row and then we played North Dakota state the last game of the year who ended up when, you know, went perfect and won the national championship and yeah. played them tough down to the wire here at home in, in the last week. And then, uh, to not get in was disappointing, but it's, uh, it's all part of the story and the plan. And, and we're just going to keep, uh, keep trying to get better and, and grow in this program the way that we think is best. What did you learn uh, maybe the great lesson or the main lesson that you learned this season in coaching? Well, you know, um, I, I was fortunate enough at the, on Super Bowl Sunday, I got to give a, a sermon actually at a, a local church here, asked me to speak on, on uh, Super Bowl Sunday. And I kind of went through the, the season or quickly just talked about, you know, coming off a two and nine season, um, the first backing up, I, I don't know if we would be in the position or or I would be the coach without that I am today without going through those type of seasons. Um, and I, I think you'll learn, uh, you know, what matters. You, you have to get better. We're all trying to, to get better. But um, it, well, you got to be uncomfortable and you got to learn. And, and you got to then more importantly, I think it reinforced the things that we believed in uh, do work. And, uh, but it, sometimes it takes time. Sometimes you ha you have to, you, you feel like you're doing everything right and the results aren't just there. And it's kind of like in life or, or with your faith. And, uh, we talked about that. So I think this season, what I learned is, um, you know, we came off a two and nine season and then we were two and four at one point this season. And, uh, you know, in that team meeting, I haven't used a ton of scriptures or get up there and just preach straight to our, our team. Um, uh, our team knows, uh, my beliefs and my faith. And we, we talk about it openly. And uh, we have one of the best uh, sports chaplains in the, in the world, really, in, in Roger Leip. And uh, that's on our staff, comes to every practice, travels on uh, the planes. And, but we were two and four. And, and uh, as a young head coach, I got this job when I was 30. Hmm. I've learned that is, you, you know, you, when you stand up in front of your team, it's Sunday and we just took another loss against another top five team in Illinois state, but we're, we're two and four and we just came off a two and nine season. And I used the scripture, James one, two through four. And I said that, you know, um, I do believe in what we're doing and we're going to keep playing hard and we're going to keep doing those things and we'll keep searching for the, the answers. And there isn't some magic uh, pill out there that's going to make this all better. But I do believe we're all in this room for a reason and that one day we'll look back and, and know that that we've persevered and that, um, you know, that these tough times are going to make us better in the end. And we went out to practice that day and and had our one of our best practices. And I don't think it's just because I read that scripture, but I think our guys learned a ton because we were ultimately in a two and thirteen stretch, and we went on to win five games in a row and ended the season ranked in the top twenty five. And like I told him, it wasn't because we just said that scripture because ultimately we watched the uh, selection show and didn't get selected. And uh, it was tough. We had a selection show and everybody told us we were probably going to be in and mm -hmm. uh, all the national people and our families are up there and you kind of watch it just just bleed away as you, you watch all these names get up there. So we went right back into the team meeting room and told them the same thing and that uh, they're going to be better husbands and better fathers and the guys that are coming back or we're going to be a better team from from going through um, this and keep controlling what we can control. So I think I've learned that you do have to adjust along the way. Uh, but I believe in what we're doing, how we're treating people, right. Treating the kids, uh, right. Loving them. I think that, you know, that we've talked a little bit of, about John Gordon before we got on here, but yeah. I mean, that's just my belief is that you have to dive into these kids and, um, you, you gotta love them. And I've learned that so much. I mean, as a, as a young head coach with 105 guys, there's a lot that comes across your desk. And unless you're just not grounded and loving them, every part of them, then it's going it, to, it's, it's probably not the job that you need. I mean, you have so much impact and can shape these guys and send them down a better path whenever they leave here that 
ultimately, I, I believe that ends up being how you win too and how you grow people and you get people on your staff to believe the same thing. Nick Hill is our guest on Sports Spectrum, Southern Illinois head football coach. You mentioned James uh, 1, 2 through 4. I'm just going to read it real fast. It says, My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And I love the the picture that you paint of learning through those trials, because that's not something that comes natural to us as human beings, you know, counting those trials and those difficult situations uh, in, in a joyful way. That is not something that comes easy for you. Let's go back a little bit and learn how you were able to to learn about things like James and perseverance and counting it all joy through your testimony of faith. Where did that take shape for you? Um, you know, I, I I've always um, you know been involved in in FCA and in growing up. It, it really is started at a, a young age. I, I believe, like looking back. In fact, my the, my my pastor and I just talked about this this week as far as like kind of going back and seeing, you know, where exactly felt like that that happened. And it was a young teacher that I had. I had a, a teacher, Mrs. Davison, in fifth grade, and you could just sometimes you just know the presence and shine in that light. And just you, she would always be, you know, talking to me about different scriptures and know that I, I love sports. And uh, there was just a presence about her. I grew up in church. I grew up in the Methodist church and always going to church and, and, and things like that. But it wasn't, um, it wasn't really until, um, you know, and all through, through high school and in college and always involved in the FCA and, um, but I really, to be honest with you, in the last year, I've just had this calling or just this feeling that I, I wanted to, to learn the Bible more. I feel like I've been that guy I've always I've believed and I've but um, I, I just felt like I, you know, like I don't know this Bible the way that I, that I should. I feel like that, you know, I, I come I, I'm at church and we got involved in a small group. I have a young family and uh, my wife. Uh, you know, I'm 34, she's 32 and, and we just needed to get involved more in the church. And, um, uh, and, and really that's changed, changed our life, uh, is just the community and, uh, the people and, um, surrounding yourself with, with great people. We have a Bible study with the staff every Monday, even during the season at three o'clock. I think it's put there for a reason at, at, at three o'clock in the afternoon, you feel like you're rushed so much to get the game plan in and, mm -hmm. We talked about like, hey, at three o'clock, it's about that time where you need to just take a chill pill and you need to relax. <laughs> and and, uh, and for 30 minutes, you know, Roger, our team chaplain comes in and we just lead a, a great discussion. And I feel like it kind of no matter what you're in the you know, two and 13 season or whatever you're going through or even winning and how to deal with success. Um, it, it just keeps you, your mind and your your eyes focused on what it needs to be. So to be honest with you, learning the, the scriptures and everything has really come probably in in the last year. I think sometimes you you as a you want these jobs and you and you think like yeah you know I was thirty and my wife was twenty seven, my wife was pregnant and we had a kid and so in the last three years. We've been, you know, we're married, young couple, young marriage. You know how that that is, and sometimes the struggles. And then I become the head coach. We have two kids, two little girls, <laughs> and um, sometimes it's not always what it's cut out to be. Sometimes those are pressures, and sometimes things at at home and 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 life is tough. And um, it, this is a selfish profession, and. I learned I don't know how you could make it without just trusting in, in God and trusting and keeping your eyes and looking for Jesus for all of those answers uh, to keep your number one, your family and number one, how to, to coach these kids and your staff and all of those things. And so um, yeah, I have a great church family. My my pastor here in Carbondale, I go, we go to the Vine Church and he was my he was we went to kindergarten together and he was my college roommate. And so uh, it's now he he became the lead pastor the same year I became the head coach and his wife and um, him are just great leaders of, of us and look to them to for so many different things. 
That's a neat dynamic too, having your <laughs> your roommate become a pastor. You're kind of a pastor too, though, because you mentioned that you spoke on a Sunday morning at church, and I'm not saying that makes you a pastor, but there's a responsibility there, and I know this because I've been able to do this a few times on a Sunday morning from the pulpit preaching at a church. Uh, I never thought I was qualified, and I don't, I'm cer- certain that you're probably guessing sometimes that you aren't either. What was that experience like for you? Uh, just preparing a sermon and delivering it at a church on a Sunday morning. There, I had a lot of nerves with that. That was a big responsibility for me. What was that like for you? Yeah, it was a, it was a lot more nerve wracking than, um, you know, speaking at a clinic or, having, <laughs> you know, thousands of coaches listening to you talk about X's and O's or anything like that. I mean, it's a, it is a great responsibility to be honest with you. I, I got an email. Um, I've been just, I, I listen to the, there's a, a redeemer app that I have. I love to run. Yeah. Uh, and so it's kind of my time to, to just get away and put on a, a sermon or a, a podcast or, or something and just, uh, or just some, some music, you know, and, and worship and, and get away. But I I've been, you know, just listening to all kinds of these, um, Matt Chandler and these different pastors and, and just listening to them. And so had no idea. I, I got an email and it was just like, Hey, we'd like for you to come and speak. <laughs> and I thought it might be to a youth group. I've spoke uh, around uh, the area to different youth groups and things in the summer and things like that. And then the email back, I was like, yeah, I'd love to. And they said, uh, you know, you'll take my place and give the sermon. I went home and told my <laughs> wife, I was like, I don't, I don't know if I've never given a sermon, but, um, I, I didn't want to miss that opportunity either. Sure. And for whatever reason, he he asked me to do it. And I got there and, and we met like 20 minutes before the service started up in his office. And I was like, hey, why'd you why'd you ask me to, to do this or who gave you my name or I've never met this guy before. And um, he was like, to be honest with you, I just, you know, looked up your name and something came across that you know, with faith and family. And then I started to social media stalk you and, you know, there were some things <laughs> on there and I just thought you'd do a good job. And I was like, well, I appreciate you. Give me the opportunity. But yeah, it, it, to be honest with you, and then pre- preparing uh, the sermon was, it was awesome just because it, it pushed you to, yes. um, to learn and to dive into different things and to take your time on what you were going to say and to, to not take that for granted. I was just going to go up there and wing some talk and, and these people were, were looking. So, um, you know, I learned a lot during the time of preparing a sermon and, uh, it was definitely a, a great feeling and, um, one that I'm definitely not a preacher, uh, but one, uh, an opportunity that uh, I was thankful for. Yeah, sometimes we just have to say yes, especially when we, to get out of our comfort zone. I'm yeah. guessing for you, and maybe it wasn't, uh, out of your comfort zone, but when you were asked to be the head coach, you said it was 2016. You were you were barely 30 years old or so, and so young, and just coming in, didn't have a lot of coaching experience previously. You did a couple years as an assistant um, with Southern Illinois in 2014 and 2015 after a, a pro career uh, as a quarterback. What was that like saying yes in that moment? Because certainly a lot of people think opportunities come. You say yes right away because it just looks like an amazing opportunity, but then there's the the responsibility, and it's sometimes, you know, when I said yes to come work with Sports Spectrum, there was fear and anxiety uh, that I had to kind of work through. What was that like for you to say that yes and become a head coach? Yeah, it was it was all those things that, that you just said. I mean, you always feel like you're ready and you're not, you know, and, and looking back now, it's like, <laughs> wow. Last night I had to drive back from Chicago and uh, we had our league meetings up there and I was listening to Matt Chandler talk about how he became a, a lead pastor down there where, where he's at now at Village Church in Dallas. And uh, he was 28 years old and he was like, I didn't, you know, I don't know why they asked me to become the, the lead pastor, and you know, but you, you feel like you, you just say yes and you go. And, and that's kind of how I was. And now you look back and you come back from conventions and things where it's when there's so it's so tough to get a job in this profession and you almost feel bad uh, about how that happened and so I feel definitely very fortunate and blessed to be able to to get this job when I was 30. I think like I said earlier you you realize that there's so many different things that that 
when you sit in a different seat, when you're the offensive coordinator, just assistant, you look and it's like, oh, it's the head coach. You, you learn that <laughs> that that seat becomes pretty sometimes lonely and um, you got to make a lot of decisions based on a lot of different things. And you have a lot of responsibilities that have nothing to do with X's and O's or football. Um, and it's a it's definitely a lot of responsibility. So you, you learn that pretty quickly. And uh, managing a staff and uh, hiring new people and and all this the like I the biggest thing is that you're responsible for 105 18 to 23 year olds, yeah. and we, when we look back on that time is like there's a lot of things going on there's a lot of things going on in our world and our culture and home lives and you get to you sit in all these kids homes and uh, home visits and you see all the things that go on in life and you want to be there for all of them. And you learn how you can't do it on your own. And you're, you're just as it's, I'm just one of these other guys here on the staff is you got to create a, you got to have a great staff and you got to empower them and you got to trust them. And, and uh, so, yeah, I looking back, I think it's like you, you just, you say, yes, you probably are super eager and think like, yeah, I want the job. And then, <laughs> then it, then it hits and you go through a few losing seasons. And like I say, you, you still have a family and I'm trying to be a leader of my own household. And, and, um, but it's, it's definitely to me, it's pointed me towards Jesus, uh, more so than anything, even in the losing seasons, I don't know how you, you can go about and, and, and understand that, yeah, there's going to be a lot of tough times. You know, uh, I think, you know, John 16, 33, we talked about that in my sermon too. I mean, it's, uh, you know, through him, you can have some peace, but there are going to be troubles on this earth. And, but he's overcome the world and you can have hope in that. And no matter what season of life you're going through, um, whether you feel like you're in a two and 13 season, uh, of life or marriage, or you got fired from your job or whatever it is. I mean, um, uh, you know, look into that, it'll get you up and it gets you excited and, um, it gets ex- excited about your team and the new opportunity and, and, and new season. Cause I do feel like when you stay, um, you know, humble and obedient to him, that there's blessings on the other side. And that's how it is in, in football and this, this game as well is sometimes you, you've got to, you've got to wait and you have to be, uh, discipline and good things are on the other side. We'll continue our conversation with Nick Hill in just a moment, but want to tell you about a couple of our partners and sponsors here at Sports Spectrum. First off, Water Mission. They're our newest sponsor and our newest partner. We love Water Mission and what they stand for, what their mission is all about. They're a nonprofit Christian engineering ministry fighting the global water crisis with safe water, sanitation, and hygiene solutions in developing countries and in disaster areas. They've served more than 5 million people in 56 countries. They have 350 staff members working around the world in nine country programs located in Africa, Asia, North, South, and Central America, and the Caribbean. This in-country presence allows Water Mission to partner with local leaders and institutions to implement solutions tailored to the unique circumstances of each community, and they are doing a great work. More than 5 million people were provided access to safe water through Water Mission. More than 155,000 people were provided access to adequate sanitation because of Water Mission. More than 2,700 people have safe water and sanitation projects built. They are for real. Please go check them out please consider supporting them. Go to watermission.org, watermission.org. Pray for them and learn more about how to fight the global water crisis. We're also sponsored and presented by Compassion International. And you know about Compassion. They've been a part of Sports Spectrum for a couple years now, the most trusted child development ministry in the world. They work exclusively through the local church in communities all over the world. It's the local church who are the heroes here not compassion. The community can see the kingdom of God at work when the local church becomes the source of life instead of disease, hope instead of despair, and when pregnant women and infants survive childbirth instead of perish and get the tools to raise children, not only to survive, but to succeed, that's when I get excited because I see the work compassion's doing through the local church, discipling every child in the word of God, You can make that difference by sponsoring a child right now 
through Compassion. Check out the website, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum, Compassion.com slash Sports Spectrum, and pray about sponsoring a child today. Now back to our conversation with Nick Hill here on Sports Spectrum. Coach, navigating your faith in a public job like that at Southern Illinois, you're a head football coach, and I think Dabo Sweeney does a wonderful job of this. Um, he doesn't shy away. He's not unashamed, like it says in Romans one sixteen, to be unashamed about our, to, to not be unashamed about our faith. But at the same time, or not be ashamed about our faith, sorry. But at the same time, you have a job to do to be a head football coach. So how it sounds like you've got a pretty good feel, but how have you f- discovered? the best way, because a lot of people struggle with this, I think, of being a Christian in the workplace. And they're not hired to be a Christian. They're hired to be a whatever they are in their job, and you're hired to be a football coach. But how do you kind of balance that and bring your faith into the workplace without being preachy or forcing your faith on anybody? Well, I think the the biggest thing is, um, you know, is is loving people treating people kindly, um, how you go about your day. I would hope that, I think that, that sometimes, you know, and being someone in a locker room or sometimes it's, it's not saying anything, but the letting them see how you live, see how you act. Um, and that light is going to be shined. And so I think that there's going to be in every relationship that opportunity will come up or, uh, I, I believe that it's it's relationship before discipleship, and I think that as a head football coach, I, I try to live that out and and do that. And um, and I've I've learned there's going to be so many opportunities for all the kids at the right time uh, to be sitting in here and come in my office, and you know, you, you not to be pushy or anything like that, uh, but the right time will come where, where you can. Decide, you know, discipleship will come in and you can share how it is for you. I think that that's the biggest thing as a Christian is I think that we need to love one another. Um, we understand that I think whenever you put a, put your you don't hold yourself on a platform and say, look, I don't mess up. I'm the first to say, like, I, I've messed up um, plenty of times, still do. And, and that, but that, that's what the, the gospel is all about. I mean, it's not about, um, you know, all these good deeds and we show them to, to God when we get up there and, and he lets us in. I mean, yeah. he did that for us on the cross. And I think that our guys can, can just not just relate to that, but it's like, man, that, that's what the gospel is, is he, he knows that you're going to fall short. I'm not, I'm not, any more disappointed in you. I mean, there, there are things and, and that we have to do and we're going to discipline you and, and be on you and want you to be at your best, but I'm still going to love you the same. And I wouldn't be here if, if it wasn't for that. And I'm not going to heaven if it wasn't for someone loving me like that. So if you want to look what love is, then you need to, to look at the life that Jesus led and thank God that he came uh, so we could have eternal life because someone's doing that to us. And I think when you when you show them that, that you're going to love them through anything and you're not just as soon as they make a mistake, because we know they're going to make mistakes. They're 18 to 22 years old. And if someone would just write me off when I made a mistake at that age, then um, I wouldn't be here either. So yeah. I think that that's how I I'll go about it and um, and try to be kind to people and, and treat people right. I love that. The relationship before discipleship. I think that's absolutely accurate and it's biblical. And I think it's actually the model that Jesus presented to so many in the gospels. Nick, I want to ask you about um, culture. And we talked, you mentioned John Gordon's name a little bit, and we talked about John's name uh, before we hit record because him and I, John and I are, are good friends. He's a great mentor to me. He's writing the forward to my new book and he's written amazing books that have helped so many people. And I know you, you went through a couple of those books with your team. Can you tell us about sort of building that culture up and maybe talk about the books, but anything else that you've seen that has helped you really kind of put your team in a place to be there for each other, to build that camaraderie and even your coaches too, and just building that, um, I don't know, they call it grit, I guess, but that, that community, um, coming together, how's that been in terms of building that culture? Yeah, I, I think that, you know, culture is such a big word and, and every, every team and everybody wants to build that culture. And, um, 
And what I, I've learned, the first the first thing that I a wall graphic we put up was culture wins championships, and and that just because you put a sign on the wall or right. uh, that that's not going to build a culture. I think that culture is just every day, and that's what I, I've told our team. I tell recruits. I mean, you want to know about our culture, then just come hang out with us, you know, for a day or two or a week, and and that that's it's it's who we are, our belief systems, and. Uh, that takes time and it takes recommitting to, and it takes consistency. And it's not just one big team meeting or one big speaker, but it's just every single day. And that's the message that I, I send to our, our team. It's, it's, uh, you know, I gave them the, I gave them the story about, we were driving a recruit back from this past St. Louis is where they fly into. And, and, uh, we were dry. I went up and picked them up. And him and his family, we stopped at Popeye's and this lady that was working at Popeye's was just so kind. So she was singing in the, the drive through window. And when I pulled up, I, I just couldn't believe she had that much energy at 1045 at a Popeye's. <laughs> she was probably middle aged and and she just, I you know, just affected my day with kindness. And, and I I've told our, our team about that. And I said, you know, when we walk down the hallways or we're going to study table and we have unbelievable facilities here, some of the best in the country and our basketball teams right here and, and our study table and our weight room and everything is all right here. And I was like, you know, sometimes we miss the boat just walking down this hallway and that's who we are as a culture. If you got your headphones on and your hood on and you walk right past some janitor or some GA or in compliance or something, and you miss that opportunity to just have a smile on your face and say hello, then that's not, that's not our culture. And I, so, um, we're always just trying to, to live out our culture. That's what I tell our staff. It's, it's not going to be the first team meeting. It's going to be how we act every single day. And that's treating people right, treating them kind when things don't go good. It's, it's us being there for them. And, um, but we we do, we're intentional about it. I I've learned each year and I try to, to, to go and meet and, and learn from the best Dabo. I don't know Dabo, but I, I try to even just watching his press conferences and listen to what he says and, and all of these things. And so this past year, we probably adjusted the most. I've talked about Roger Leip a lot. Um, uh, he's a, a, our character coach and just the things that we can do. We brought in the the Marines this past year, so the program you've maybe have seen goes around to, to different teams, and they spend forty eight hours with your team and put them in some adverse situations, and that was awesome for us as coaches just to watch back. It was one of the best team building um, exercises we ever had. We had them for forty eight hours, and we're going to bring them back this summer. And uh, it was it was awesome. We read the book, The Power of a Positive Team. We get our whole team in there and we don't talk anything about football. We just let the book go and and a player or a coach leads that discussion. Um, This past year, I put I put together um, I'm from here, too. So it's kind of a unique situation. Like I'm from southern Illinois. I played college here and now I'm coaching here. So my parents still live here. My sister, my brother played here. My wife played volleyball here. Like I love this place. And so I know a lot of people in the community. And uh, so I basically put together uh, men and women um, from all different walks of life who I would want our guys to know or implement that I think that would. So I put together a committee and I had them interview. We basically came up with our our leadership council and I had them go in a room and get to know them and got feedback from those people, the superintendent of schools at our elementary school, um, people that I've went to church with, our softball coach, um, different people that I knew held the same values and then got reports back from them on who they felt and what they they heard from them and getting perspectives on. So we've done a ton on leadership development and and learning about our players diving into their their who they are as people. And I think it's allowed us to to know them and be able to coach them in ways that um, reach them more than just the the normal um you know, hey, they're our player and this is who they are. And but you got to dig down deep to, to uncover some of the things and you'll learn more about them and you can have better conversations with them and, and you can push them in ways that you, you wouldn't otherwise be able to. I love that. Uh, last couple of questions here with Nick Hill on Sports Spectrum, Southern Illinois head football coach. What are some rhythms, disciplines, uh, ways that you stay connected to God? You mentioned earlier 
in our interview, uh, just about diving in and in a desire to learn the scriptures, which I think is something all of us as believers should continue to strive for every day. But what are some of the ry- rhythms and disciplines? You mentioned podcasts when you're running. What are some other ways that you stay connected with the Lord, both in season and out of season? Because I know it's a different type of vibe when it's off season versus during a long season. Yeah. And, I, and I've tried more intentionally this past season um, to to keep those same things going during the season. And it was our best season. So I'm going to keep doing there you it. Go. Keep it's, doing it. <laughs> I, I uh, is, you know, like you, you get going, we have our, our TV show in the mornings we had. And um, so it's Sunday mornings and then we, we practice on Sundays and you're b- breaking down the film. So during the season, I didn't make it to church much. Right. In this past season, I was like, no, I, I'm going to find a way. I'm the head coach. We're going to adjust this schedule to where, we're going to go, you, you can go, you go to church if you want to go, I'm going to go. And, um, even our Wednesday, our small group meets, um, on Wednesday evenings, this is at our, our local church. And I tried intentionally making that, even if I was late to it, my wife was already there and kids were there. I would show up at, at our small group as much as I can. The, the leader of our small group teaches school south of here and he would come and meet, um, every few weeks here in my office, if I if I hadn't met, so it was surrounding myself more so with people that were going to check in on you as the season's going on, and understand that um, having those people in your life are important. Um, started th- this past year, we actually started a little bit early. A lot of people started on January one, but with my pastor Casey Raymer, the lead pastor at the Vine, that was my. Uh, college roommate is trying to make it through the Bible in in a year. So the read scripture app, which is an awesome app because it's got these videos. And because when you're, when you're going through the old Testament, some of that can be tough. It can be really tough. (laughs) And uh, if you're not going through it with someone and someone that's kind of above you spiritually to explain some of these things, um, it would be easy to just kind of quit or skip over those parts. And, but they're all equally as important. So, um, still doing that. I think the biggest thing for me and really in the, is, uh, I started training last year for, for a half marathon and I found that I've just can't quit doing it now because it gives me an opportunity even during the season is to take time to go for a run. And that's my time to just get away from the office. There's no emails. There's nobody that can come in your office and distract you or anything. It's like, I'm just, I'm leaving and I put my headphones in and I usually, like I said, I, um, have been into all these different preachers that are just amazing from, you know, Carl Lentz and Chad Beach and Judah Smith and, and Matt Chandler and just finding these guys online and just, um, you know, listening to uh, them preach. And then it, it kind of just strikes up things in your head. And I found that just keeps you, you know, not just grounded, but it, it just motivates you. You come back with so much energy and it, it gets you through. So that's kind of been my rhythm and way to, to find it is, is putting those headphones on and listening and uh, no matter what season it is. Yeah, that's awesome. And I, I love all those pastors and preachers that you mentioned are, are all solid biblically based teaching too, which is key because you can be yeah. as entertaining as you want, but if you're right. not preaching no. the word, uh, yeah. then it doesn't matter, but that's yeah. really great. So yeah. my, my pastor and I, we've talked a lot about that, you know, and it's not my job that they, they know so many more things, but yeah, it's not about the the show that you put on and, and listen to Tim Tebow, you know, like just pulling up, you know, passion 2020. I've tried to, yep. wasn't able to go, but just listening to all those speakers, they're unbelievable speakers and leaders. And, um, you know, they're, I've learned that there's only one Bible, you know, and there's one Bible and those words don't change. And if you've got to, find people that are preaching the Bible and no matter what denomination or what's going on or what it is, but, um, that's what I want uh, more of. Nick, this has been great. Thank you so much for being here, uh, on sports spectrum. Last question, the, the great lesson that the Lord is teaching you right now, what has he been showing you? What's he been teaching you in the season of life you're in? What is God showing you today? I think it's just to, to, to love more like him. We talked about that a little bit is just that that's what's been, been on my heart. Um, even in, as a husband, you know, there's so many times that, um, in, in this job is to, I think that the biggest thing that I I've learned as you dive into this, that the, 
what J- Jesus wants, what God wants is, is a humble heart and to remain humble, um, to, to forgive quickly. Um, and that's what love is. It's patient, it's kind, it's forgiving. And so many times you kind of forget that when something happens against you or something like that. So I've just tried to to be, that's been kind of, that's been my word, the John Gordon, you know, pick a word and it, it was love. And I'm sure that's a, a lot of people's, but um, staying committed to that, even when it's not easy to love or forgive and sometimes to forget. And so, um, and I've learned a lot. I, I've enjoyed reading your book. I'm in the middle of it right now. And it's, uh, it's been helpful for me too, because we've all have those relationships where we need to forgive. And uh, so that's kind of, uh, you know, right now, I think is the biggest thing on my heart. Hmm. Thank you for that. I, I really do appreciate you checking out the book as well. He is Nick Hill, Southern Illinois head football coach. We'll be watching in 2020 and beyond seeing how Southern Illinois plays and certainly being led by Nick Hill, who is led by the Lord, is going to be a lot of fun to watch. Nick, thanks so much for being here uh, on the podcast, on the sports show, and we really just appreciate it. Thanks so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks. I, I really enjoyed it. Thanks for having me. And that was Nick Kill. Many thanks to Nick for joining us here on Sports Spectrum. Wish him and wish his team nothing but the best in 2020 going into the 2020 season, which hopefully we have a 2020 season. I wouldn't see why we won't, but who knows with the with the pandemic and with the coronavirus and all that's happened. Um, we just don't know. But uh, we're praying for Nick and, and certainly for his team and for all of you out there listening who are affected by the pandemic and the coronavirus outbreak. And obviously the interview that you just heard, we hope that was OK. The first part being a more current interview with Coach Nick and then the second part being what we had already taped, you know, 30 to 40 minutes of of conversation with Nick Hill that we didn't just want to go. Uh, have it go awry and throw it away. We wanted to bring that to you as well. So we hope you enjoyed this conversation with Nick Hill from Southern Illinois and their head football coach joining us here on Sports Spectrum. Again, you can reach us on our website, sportspectrum.com. Check out our magazine as well. That's a great place to get content delivered right to your door. Go to sportspectrum.com. You can click on the magazine icon and subscribe to our magazine. It's real cheap, just 18 bucks for an entire year subscription over at sportspectrum.com. And then subscribe and download this podcast and make sure you're sharing it with as many people as you know to continue telling these stories of sports and faith. That's what we want to do. It's what we believe in. We believe in bringing Jesus back into the conversation, and we need your help in doing that. So thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for telling others, and we just appreciate you. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Right here on Sports Spectrum, my name is Jason Romano. I hope you all have a great rest of your day. Stay safe, and we'll see you soon.